So you touring? Yeah. Um, it's a little scary every time you've been off the road for a bit and you've got to gear yourself up for another big tour. Um, this is going to be a fun year of touring for me, and it's, we're going to do a lot of other, you know, more big, big venues. But, um, but in the meantime, my management had a brilliant idea about um, doing something that I've never done before, which is get out on stage with a piano and a guitar and, and play and just play. Acoustic, you know, it's acoustic, you know, no, smaller venues. No, yeah, you know, fun for the fans that, that get a ticket, you know, and 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 really fun for me because the Q and A is so helpful for me. We we tell stories, whatever songs kind of wind up developing, we do. And, you know, I was so nervous about how am I going to film 90 minutes with this, you know. I'm always so used to just, pr you know, presenting and rehearsing a really polished show. And uh, it's been really fun to see how quickly an, an hour and a half can go by when, when you're flying by the seat of your pants. Well, you were talking about how the industry is changing. And, I mean, that, that's what people crave now. I mean, it's the live experience. Yeah. And not just a great live show, which I can get a DVD of as right, well. But, right, But that interaction is amazing. It's the interaction. And that's, you know, as the music business is setting tables on the Titanic, it's... Uh, it's it, you know, people still crave that they thing. Do. You can't get it by watching a video phone clip of it on YouTube. You mm -hmm. can't get it from a DVD. You have to be there, and it's that. It's what brought me to theater to begin with. It's what brought me to to plays and Broadway. And what, why I wanted to do that was because it's about creating that moment every night that will never be the same. That uh, that you share that 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 X factor with the audience. And so um, and so I've I've been guilty in the past of presenting a show um, that's that's. That's like I'm going to take you here, whether you're ready for it or not. You know, yeah, yeah. and that's how so many of the arena shows are. It's like this is the show. You're going to sit down, and you're a kind of a passive audience member. And I hope you, I hope you're really entertained. But this is my gig, and you're going to be here to watch it. Um, boy, I mean, doing these gigs has really taught me a lot about the idea of just being guided by the audience, about but the ebb and flow of, of their energy, and how really when you accept that and and work on that muscle. Um, you you really there's no room for mistakes because there's no such thing as a mistake. If you're if you're if you're true. flowing yeah, exactly. with them, then there really isn't anything to be nervous about yeah. because um, because you're doing it together. And so um, you know even the mistakes are fun. You know, so uh, we've had a blast. And as I go into the bigger arenas, you know my pledge to myself and to my fans uh, who haven't been able to get tickets to these smaller shows is that what we've learned from these smaller gigs and these very improv impromptu um, kind of shows has that those lessons have to be. To be brought into uh, to the big show because as well. it can translate. I mean, I you know I, I just saw Michael Bublé perform a little while ago. Yeah. It was Madison Square Garden. Yeah, but it was very intimate. He's one of those artists that, 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 that can that can make a big a big arena or even a stadium uh, intimate. And I think that that's that's what people want right they now. Do. That's that's what's um, what you know when you when you when you've got artists like that who aren't afraid to to be vulnerable on stage with your crowd. Um, you know, I love that. That's the most fun for me. When somebody shouts something at me that's unexpected, I'll riff on that for ten minutes. You know, yeah. um, you know, you might have your ass handed to you, but it's going to be fun and funny. You know, and uh, and so, you know, I, I have a bla the, the unexpected moments are the ones where we all go backstage and high five, and to to limit how many open windows you have of, of allowing that kind of stuff to happen is just a detriment to the show, really. So yeah, as much of that as possible is great. Where do you see yourself ten years from now? Well, I mean, I've been a I was asked that question a ton ten years ago, and I, I think that I'm sitting here having the exact conversation I would have I would have liked to have had ten years ago. Are you exactly where you hoped you would? Yes, be? Uh, totally, one hundred percent. And so I feel very gratified that after ten years, I can sit here and feel like we never had to change ourselves. We never had to mm -hmm. to bastardize what we love about music and what we love about what we do to to get more people and to continue to sit here and have the conversation. So ten years from now, I obviously hope that you know things always continue. You know. But I'd like to be able to sit here and be able to say the same thing, that we didn't sell out, that we didn't, um, you know, change our values and change, you know, what we believe in. And so um, it's, it's been a great, a great trip, and I'm sure the next, the next 10 years will certainly happen a lot quicker than the last 10. Your 30s. Yeah, I, man. I'm, the I'm, dirty 30s. I'm, I'm thir the dirty 30s, yeah. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to treat my, my dirty 30s like the terrible twos, actually, I think. Uh, <laughs> is more, I think oh, more petulance. I think more petulance, more hissy fits. Uh, <laughs> I think just temper tantrum central is going to be me. That's why I got the big, the big heels in my boots. That's so that when the I, big boots when I do that, you know, it really resonates on the floor. You know, oh God, don't make him angry. Um, yeah, no, my rider is going to be ridiculous. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Everything must be peach colored. Um, <laughs> but not smell of peach. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There's one less edamame than I requested. <laughs> um, I'm actually embracing it. I turned 30 in, in a month and a half. And, uh, you know, my 20s were so, uh, you know, just trial by fire. That I think my 30s have actually. Hard in your 20s. I worked. I worked really hard, and and I think that, you know, I feel very proud of what I've accomplished in my 20s, and and I think in my 30s, I, I actually like after 
you know, years of feeling like an old man trapped in a young person's body, I'm glad that it's finally starting to, to balance out. I can, I can feel comfortable in my own skin about, you know, telling bad jokes in a sweater. Yeah. <laughs> From one old man to the other, trust me. Yeah, exactly. The 30s are good. Yeah, excellent. Good. A little, a little salt and pepper. We'll, we'll see what happens. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Great talking to you.